Hey everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Radiant Wise Spirit Mini is going to drop this week. If you were someone who pre-ordered like I was, you may have already gotten your deck like I did. Um, and I'm sure that there will be some buzz about it on the interwebs because it's a lovely deck. It really is. And even though it's a mini size, I think it does a lot of what we love from our standard Dirty Pam. Um, for those of you who don't know, when we talk about um, a deck called the Dirty Pam, we're talking about this guy here, right? Um, but it did occur to me that with all the stuff that's coming out about this deck, we'll probably hear some stuff about the Dirty Pam and the brouhaha that happened when Los Gare Bay like switched the decks but kept the same box and blah 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 blah. And I thought it might not be the worst idea to kind of go through the history of this little publication family of Los Garibayo RWS decks that are all either the same deck or use the same box, um, which is probably the most awkward way to actually describe this. But I promise you, when you see this collection of seven decks, six of which I have, um, I think things will be a lot more clean. Um, I think probably the most expedient way and the clearest way to kind of go about this history lesson, if you will, is to just start at the beginning of the chronology. And for that, we are going to take away our Radiant Y Spirit Mini, boop, and we are going to bring out this deck, boop. Now, some of you are probably saying, all right, Melissa, what's the big deal? You literally just showed this deck, Dirty Pam, woo, like girlfriend. I thought I was in for a trip. Oh dear viewer, oh dear viewer, you are in for a trip. For this is not the Dirty Pam. No, 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 it is not. In fact, it's not even the deck you probably think it is. This is a whole different deck that Los Garibayo began distributing in 2008. Um, now, 2008 was kind of a fun year for Tarot because it was a year before 2009. And 2009 would mark the century of Rider Waite Smith um, decks. So Los Garibayo um, began distributing this particular deck, deck in Europe. And when it came out, there were several tarot nerds who were like, Yes, this is the Pam I have been waiting for my entire life. I have found her and she is glorious. Um, which is nice. Um, and to be fair, like, they, they did a pretty good job with this. Um, this is really close, actually, to a Pam A. Let me see if I can't find here, right? So this is the study deck that I've got here. Boop, study deck. Um, and yeah, this is a straight up, um, untouched photo, or untouched in Photoshop of an actual Pam A. Um, so you can see that there are some changes in color tone, but when you compare this to a uh, U.S. Games um, Rider Waite Smith um, that had been available at the time, you will see that this deck is now restoring a lot of things. Um, you're kind of losing some of the weird blurry line art that had happened um, in the early 2000s. You're going to softer colors than the super, super saturated bright yellows and blues. Um, so a lot of people were seeing this deck and being like, yes, yes, this is the one. Something else that sweetened the pot is that um, this deck honored the first deck uh, that had been published in 1909 by choosing this Roses and Lilies uh, color scheme for the back. Um, that's very close to what the original would have had. Um, it's a slightly um, smaller scale. There are 12 rows here. The original one only had 10 rows um, from top to bottom. But still, like, a lot of people are like, yes, the back I want, the art I want, I have found my Pam. Um, other people were still, you know, because there's always something we can find. Um, we're still saying, like, hey, well, yeah, but we've got this really annoying, like, multilingual border at the top. You don't have um, Pamela Coleman Smith's calligraphy at the bottom. You just have these, you know, typeface things, like... Eh, not great. Um, so this deck, it did sell well amongst some Terra nerds and people who were trying to get a, a brand new um, Art Elias deck to study from, um, but it didn't really take off. Um, 
what had happened was US Games came out with their Smith Weight Centennial deck, which has the calligraphy at the bottom. It does have the softer colors. Um, yes, it does. It has a different back than a historical back, but it does a really good job of honoring Pam A. So I think that that really did kind of like take this one's steam and it kind of just stopped selling and ultimately kind of languished. Um, I also did find some information that Los Garibayo didn't actually publish this deck, they just distributed it. Um, the second deck that kind of like took this one's spot um, is this exact same deck here, this same card, um, card stock, card images, etc. They just changed the box up a little bit um, for a box that kind of like looks like the advert cards that come with this deck. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right here and insert some pictures of the box um, that is the second one in this family. So hang on one second. All right. So at this point, we should now have seen our second box in the mix. Um, it does look an awful lot like these card images here. And you should have seen um, the image that showed the bottom of the box. Um, so I'm talking about something like this here, um, where it clearly says US Games. So I personally think that US Games had kind of made up this deck, allowed Los Garibay to distribute it, and then when it wasn't really selling, when their own deck um, was doing much, much better, they just pulled this, popped um, remaining stock in a cheap box and liquidated it out. Um, Los Garibayo, however, apparently really liked their box design and they kept it for another deck. Um, but before we get to that, I want to quickly talk about a third deck that uses the same art here. Um, and that, is one that comes in this box. All right, it's a big box. Um, and it is an Italian only edition. Um, you can't buy this in um, any store in America. And I'm fairly sure that you can't buy it in any store outside of Italy in Europe and definitely not in Australia. Um, however, you can go to Los Garibayo's website and search the it won't come up if you search Taroki Rider Weight, but if you do search the product code KIT08, you should be able to find this and purchase it. Um, shipping is quite expensive, um, but you can get it. Um, if you are in America, I do know that it'll occasionally pop up on Amazon and you can get it quite cost effectively. Um, but yeah. The deck that comes in this box is almost identical to the 2008 deck. Um, that's not the 2008 deck. Where did that go? The deck that comes in this box is almost identical to the deck that comes in this box, with the exception of a couple things. Um, I'm going to move this out of the way here. All right. So this is the 2008 deck. This is the one that is not the 2008 deck. Um, as you might be able to tell, it's... The new deck is considerably thicker. In fact, let me tilt some cards up here. All right. So yeah, you can see that it's several cards thicker than the old deck. Um, actually, let me even see how many cards thicker it is. Yeah, it's like 16 cards thicker. That is a lot of cards. Um, so yeah. The cardstock is a lot thicker, and I would actually go so far as to say better. I, I don't always say that thicker cardstock is better, but this one is definitely way more durable, and it's still pretty um, flexible. You can definitely shuffle the sucker. Um, the newer deck also is cleaner printed. Um, here's the fools here. The old one is on the left, the new one is on the right. Hopefully you should be able to see that the line work is just a little sharper in the newer one. The colors are also, um, less saturated. The yellows are far more like the buttery yellows of the original. Still a little on the canary side, but still, you know, a lot softer. 
So it's actually kind of nice. And if you wanted it, you can get it by going to Los Garabeo and searching the term KIT08 for the Taroki Rider weight. It does come in a really nice box if you're interested. Ooh, right? Um, you've got a little magnet clasp here, which is very nice. Right. Um, this really pretty printed inside. Um, it does come with a little book. It is an Italian, so you might have to get on your um, language apps to learn Italian. But it's a nice little book and comes with a little place there to nestle your cards in. Um, so if you wanted the original Pam A blue and white um, things, you can actually still get this deck. But the thing that is more fun is the fact that there was no fanfare when this deck got discontinued. Um, what ended up happening is after US Games took back their deck, Low Scare Bayo apparently decided that they really liked the box. They really liked, you know, honoring Pamela Coleman Smith. They wanted to continue this. So they kept the box design, but put a whole new deck in it. Oh, that's not great. So people thought that they were buying this deck, the pretty, you know, nice historical Pam A, and instead we're getting the Dirty Pam. And while the Dirty Pam is a very popular and pretty deck and everyone loves it today, a lot of people back when this deck first got released did not feel that way. They had wanted this and they were getting this. And they thought that this deck was the one that was supposed to honor Pamela Coleman Smith and be like the 1909 original. And then they were getting this and they're like, that is a photoshopped mess. Um, a lot of other people who maybe didn't really understand the differences between Pam A, B, C, and D, um, we're also getting this and like, oh my god, that line artwork is hideous. Ugh. And, I mean, they're not wrong. Pam B is deeply problematic. If we take a look at the faces of those two fools, do you see how this guy's, like, very handsome? He looks like he could be, like, chiseled in marble. Right? This guy, his face is all squished up. A little Quasimodo effect. Not, not near as handsome, right? Those quality issues carried through the entire deck, really, as far as line art. So people were not happy about this deck when it got um, published, which was, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, around about uh, 2012, I think, was when the Dirty Pam first got released. So people were actually quite upset. Um, Dirty Pam was a slow burn. Um, a lot of people were ticked that it wasn't the deck that they had wanted. Um... And a lot of people didn't realize that there was another deck. So if, you know, for instance, you were someone who was collecting um, RWBS decks, you might not have realized that there was a whole other deck there that you needed to collect. Um, it wasn't really until 2017-ish mm, or so um, when different YouTubers started showing this deck and, being, and talking about how much they loved it that it um, found its market and really started to sell. For whatever reason, uh, Los Garabeo didn't realize that that was a thing that was happening and, or maybe they did, I don't know. Um, because they did ultimately turn this deck that everyone loved into the Reading My Spirit. But what they did instead was in hmm, May 2018-ish or so, they started distributing a third version in the same box, but with an entirely different deck, like stupidly different. Um, and I'm sure that this is something that many people have seen before. Um, it is still using the Pam B line artwork. So when you look at the, the lines, it's not near as huge of a difference, but the coloration is far more like the historical Pam B than the Photoshopped Dirty Pam. And it also does have the um, Pamela Coleman Smith's calligraphy at the bottom here. So honestly, as a historic Pam B representation, this is actually a really good deck. Um, shockingly good in many ways. Is it exactly like a Pam B? No. The colors actually do need to be softer. Pam B is uh, far more of a pastel deck. Um, if you did want to see what that would look like, I know that um, Lisa from Mindful Terror, she does have a Pam B and has a couple of videos where she's shown bits of it and you can see the coloration differences really quite lovely and soft. 
Um, but if you wanted something mass market, this is about as close as you can get. So yeah, if you've been keeping track, this now means that there are three different decks that come in the same Wheat Sheaf box. Um, and they all look very different. Let me just kind of like scooch this up here. All right, those are the different faces of our fools. And the backs are all very different, all right? Um, we started off with a blue and yellow. Blue and yellow, I keep saying blue and yellow. Blue and white, roses and lilies. Changes it to a red, green, and custard color. And then blows up the scale for the third version. Absolutely bizarre. I don't even get it. So yeah, that's that guy. Um, at the, about a year after the Dirty Pan Box was discontinued and this Boring Pan Box came out, Low Scare Bayo did finally come out with Radiant Life Spirit. Boop. Radiant Life Spirit there. It is the same art as the Dirty Pan. Just uh, kind of blown up a little. All right. So there's a Dirty Pam Fool next to the Radiant Wise Spirit. As you can see, the cardstock on Radiant Wise is way glossier. That's crazy. Um, it's not my favorite because it does blow up this art an awful lot. And to me, it looks like they didn't have this in a vector um, that they that they were probably working with like JPEGs and vectorized art because it does get a lot blurrier at this larger scale. Um, and you can definitely see some like pixelation here in this background. So to me, is this entirely successful? No, but that's that's another video. And then finally, um, this month we do have the latest version in the family, the mini, and it's so cute. Look at that little fool, right? So that's basically our history lesson of all these different decks, which is a lot. And I realized that it might help if you saw like a little bit of a, a visual. So here we've got my, my cheat sheet, my notes. Um, to recap, the very first version was a multi-language um, multi uh, deck in a Wheat Chief box. That got quickly replaced to be a multi-language deck in a brown uh, box from US Games. Then that got replaced to something you can actually still purchase, the multi-language deck in the Italian Taroki Rider Weight box. Um, then we switch over to our Dirty Pam uh, in October of 2012 in a Wheat Sheaf box. Um, the next one to come out um, chronologically would be our Boring Pam, also in a Wheat Sheaf box, followed by Radiant White Spirit, which some people call the Naked Pam, very cheeky. And then finally, I guess, um, our Baby Pam, <laughs> the third of the atmospheric decks. So yeah, a total of seven different decks in this family all together thus far. And it can be quite confusing because the decks don't all look alike by any stretch of the imagination. So we even come packaged in the same stuff. So yeah, if you ever wanted to understand a little bit more about this weird moment of tarot publication history, I guess now we've got it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I rambled on incessantly about a whole bunch of decks. I hope that you enjoyed it. Bye.